Welcome or welcome back on C-Square. In this video clip we're going to look how to graph tangent of x. And for that reason I'm going to use a table and a unit circle if it's needed, which I will. But for that I'm going to do a table. And if you notice on this table I have multiple things. I have I'll put x, the input, then sine of x, cosine of x, and then the last one be tangent. Why? Why did I do that? Because if you remember, tangent of x is nothing else than sine of x over cosine of x. Okay? So, let's start with the first one. Zero, zero radian, right? Which is this guy here. Okay? Um, uh, sine is zero, cosine is one, so this will be zero. The next point is 30 degree, or pi over six. And if we take a look, the sine is one half, the cosine is square root of 3 over 2. So what's happened when we divide these two guys? Let's see here very fast. We flip the second one, right? And we end up with 1 over square root of 3. But if we rationalize this guy, we get square root of 3 over 3. So that's the guy I'm going to put in here. Let's go to the next guy, which is pi over 4, 45 degree. And if you notice, that is square root of 2 over 2 for both trigonometric functions sine and cosine. So tangent will be 1. A very easy one to remember. The next one is 60 degree, or pi over 3. And if you notice, sine is square root of 3 over 2. And cosine 1 half. We end up here of square root of 3. And then we go to the next one, 90 degree, pi over 2, which is this one. And here, uh, sine is 1, cosine is 0. 1 divided by 0 is undefined. Let me be sure. Undefined. Okay. And let's move to quadrant 2, right? So, so far we have quadrant 1, now quadrant 2. And the first angle is this one, which is 2 pi over 3, 120 degree. Sine is square root of 3 over 2, and uh, cosine negative 1 half. We're going to end up with negative square root of 3. The next angle is this one, 135 degree, which is 3 pi over 4. The sine is square root of 2 over 2, cosine negative square root of 2 over 2 we end up with negative 1. The next one will be uh, 150 by pi over 6. And that uh, uh, sine, sine is uh, 1 half, cosine negative square root of 3 over 2. So we end up with negative square root of 3 over 2. And the last one will be pi, I'm going to do this table, which is this guy, 180. Uh, sine is 0. The sine is 0. And the cosine is negative 1. We end up with 0. And you already notice we go back to 0. There are some patterns here. Okay. Basically, we have quadrant 3. You're going to get whatever you have in quadrant 1. And quadrant 4. And we'll match with quadrant 2. So let me clear the thing here. and uh, So I can do the graph now, please remember this value or put them down on your paper, right? So let's see what we have now. x-axis, y-axis, right? If you remember, we start with 0 and 0, right? Then the next point was uh, pi over 6, right? 33 and we have what? Square root of 3 over 3, kind of right here. Let's say like that. Then we have pi over 4, which was kind of 1, a little bit more. And then we have pi over 6, which was square root of 3, if I remember well, a little bit more. And then we have pi over 2, right? And that one it was on D5, so I'm going to draw a vertical line here. The graph should go something like that, asymptotic. Okay, and now let's let's do something similar on the other side. 
okay if you remember we had the first one 2 pi over 3 was negative square root of 3 and the next one was uh, 3 pi over 4 135 it was kind of a one, negative 1 something like that it's, it's going closer to the x-axis the next one was square, negative square root of 3 over t even closer to the x-axis and a pi was a zero that's the thing we should get okay and like i said similar you're going to get the other sides in fact i have the whole graph here to see that what you should get okay so remember we have this piece and this piece in our graph yeah if you do quadrant three you get that and if you do quadrant four you get this piece and here you have more than uh two cycles right uh we can see also what's happened on the negative side a bunch of vertical asymptotes in fact you cannot count them okay but other than that the shape is like this increasing all the time the period is pi right if you notice all this right so i put this this stuff here okay and i mentioned vertical asymptote always when cosine is zero that is very important no amplitude like sine and cosine but this is a periodic function also with the period of pi so let's see an example here and i, I put a summary here and i'll show you how fast and easy you can do this problem sketch a graph so first of all you want to do the period which is be careful pi over b not 2 pi over b like sine and cosine so in this case it's going to be pi over 2 very important information you'll see we, we're going to get something like that or graph that has a period of pi over 2 and then take that 2x and make it equals pi over 2 always take this guy and make it equals to pi over 2 why because remember tangent in this case of 2x is sine of 2x over cosine of 2x this guy we're going to make it equals to zero and the first time when that happened if you remember under unit cycle is a pi over two and you solve this equation how huh. many ways i'm going to multiply by two for instance and that would be 4x equals pi and then i get x equals pi over four this is a very important information why because now i can draw the graph and i'm going to do a short sketch here and then you're going to see how the graph looks okay just for you to see right so look at here this is the first thing you want to do pi over four so let's see here and you're going to draw a vertical line then go on the other side and do the same thing that is negative pi over four okay if you uh, remember the tangent of x the one you did it that is an odd function so you can do you can use that property okay uh, odd function uh, they are symmetrical with respect to origin and then in the middle is this zero obviously and that's it this is the graph we're looking for and if you notice now is this is the checking point remember i said that we can check this should be pi over two this b and that's pretty much you can see the graph here also and we are correct asymptote asymptote this is the part we did it together okay and now you try this one and we'll see you i'll see you back
If you end up with something like that, you did a wonderful job. You have here uh, the accurate graph. You see how uh, this is the left side I did. I will see more duplicates. If you enjoyed this video, okay, don't forget to hit the like button and come back and subscribe for more help. Thank you.